I know for sure that what's going on in your life, one of the biggest factors of it is because your energy, your power, your vibration is stuck in the past on three different levels. Now, the final level that I'm going to share with you is probably the biggest thing that once you do implement this, if you do implement this, right? It's not guaranteed because I know sometimes we can watch these videos, feel motivated, feel happy, feel like, oh my gosh, this makes sense. Then skip to the next video or then do something else, but not implement this thing. So it would mean the world to me if you was to watch this video, do these three things that I share with you, especially the last one, which you can do from, from this very moment, once you finish watching this and then share with myself in the comments or even just message me or something how this has changed like even an energetic shift in your life in your mind but even a, a physical shift in the results that you're seeing and these results can vary some of you the results that you're going for in life is financial finances how can i earn more money or how can i get out of this this rut or this thing that i'm stuck in some of you it might be health maybe you've been going on this journey knowing that you need to change something in health wise but not doing it others it may even be love life Right? And this is a big thing actually, love life and finance is probably the biggest factors with what I'm going to share in this video. And also it can go with many different aspects, deeper spiritual purpose, everything like that. So what is this thing all to do with right now? A lot of the challenges that you're experiencing is not necessarily from what is happening right now. It's from the fact that your energy is stuck in the past on three levels. The first level is beliefs, right? Your energy right now is stuck from the beliefs that have been imprinted in you from the past. Now we can say, okay, yeah, society has been conditioning us, family conditioned us, all these different pressures that we have to, to fulfill, to do. But I'm not even talking about that. That's okay, that's one level. The biggest problem right now is a lot of these beliefs that you have, the way that you think, the way that you allow information, allowed information to come in to you, that you use, a lot of these beliefs, if you was to really look at them, you wouldn't even believe. But why do you believe them? Because of repetition over the years, people saying certain things, you subconsciously being conditioned by things. And we are being conditioned in every moment. I don't know if you heard this study. There was a study that they did where they got people, actors, to come into this park where they would sit next to a random person on the bench. When they were coming to the park, they were trained to do the same thing. They would hold a cup of coffee in one hand and they would have their phone in another they would sit down on the bench pass the coffee to someone and say hey do you mind just holding this while i just send this message then they would pass the coffee most people would say yeah sure let me hold it they would hold it send a message and then they would take the coffee back say thank you so much and then walk go off about their day what they found they did this to a lot of people the only difference was that to half of the people that they did this to these trained actors they followed the same structure the only difference was that they would for half of the people that they came to, they would either pass a hot or warm coffee. The other half of the people, they would pass a cold coffee or iced coffee. After they did this sequence, around 20 minutes after, a different actor, the person on the bench didn't know that these two were related or correlated together or part of the study, but a different actor would come. And when this actor would come, it would pass a questionnaire to them and say, hey, this takes three minutes to fill out. If you fill it out, I'll just give you $20. Majority of people are like, sure, three minutes, $20, of course. So they would read this short story and they would answer some multiple choice questions after. Interesting thing is, out of all of these people that they did this thing where they passed the coffee, then sent the message and took the coffee back, walked off, then 20 minutes later, actor comes over and says, hey, can you do this study? And read this story and fill in this questionnaire. Story didn't change. Everyone read the same story. But the interesting thing is the people that were handed the warm coffee, the hot coffee, 20 minutes prior, when they read this story and they were asked about the main character in this story, when they filled out the, the questionnaire, they said the main character was warm and friendly. Majority, 80% said that. The other group of people who got the cold coffee, when they read the exact same story, had the exact same questions, when they filled out about the main character, they didn't say he was warm and friendly. They said that the main character was cold and uncaring. Nothing in the story changed. Nothing in the, in the sequence of events changed. The only thing that changed was the temperature of the coffee that was handed to the individual 20 minutes prior. This is, this one study shows very simply that we are being conditioned in every moment, whether we realize it or not. Now, there's a lot of beliefs that you've been conditioned with, ways of thinking that you've been conditioned with that are latching into this reality.
So first thing that we need to do, and this might be the most esoteric thing that I'm going to share with you. Like I said, the third one is the most tangible one that you can do right away. But this one requires you, actually when beliefs come up, when things come up, to actually think about it. Do you really believe this? These things that uh, social media is pushing, when you see this thing and it triggers you, do you really believe this? If somebody comes in with a conflicting belief, don't put your ego, what most people do, think about it, I see this all the time. My ego will kick in and be like, no, but this is the way. I don't believe that. Well, no, that's not true. But when we do this, we don't open up to, to the real truth, what could be possibly the truth. Now, I'm not saying every single belief that you have is not true. Okay, there's probably a lot of beliefs that you have that are true for you right now. Obviously, this can change going forward. But I guarantee there are many beliefs that are holding you back, whether it's beliefs of you're not, you're not good enough, whether it's beliefs that you don't have the, the talent for this, whether it's beliefs that you're not educated enough, whether it's beliefs that people from your area of the world can't achieve that, whether it's beliefs that you're too old, so many beliefs, whether it's beliefs on politics, on how relationships should be, on how things should be in the world. Question your beliefs. If you don't question them, you'll be forever ran by society's conditioning, society's beliefs that they push on you, right? Consciously or unconsciously. So this is the first thing to be aware of. Now, the way that I look at this is if something comes in that conflicts my current belief, I actually get excited. Even if at first I don't believe I'm like, no, that's not true. I get excited because this might be something that I'm just not even aware of, that I'm getting the current results that I'm getting in life because I have the beliefs that I have in life. If I adopt this, maybe results will change. So I really think about, is this 100% fact? Is this 100% true? If it is, okay. What was false? What was wrong about my previous belief? Which one am I adopting now? We are not just stationary in life, holding the same thoughts, holding the same patterns. The majority of people do this. You look at some people when they're 20, when they're 30, it's like the same person. Nothing changed. And the thing is, nothing changes if nothing changes. This is the first thing. Second thing is linked to this is also our thoughts stuck in the past. Not just our thoughts in the terms of beliefs, but our thoughts of why did this happen? I wish I, I did this in the past. I wish I took that opportunity. Maybe I should have spoke to that person. Maybe I should have changed where I applied to go to college or to uni. Or maybe I shouldn't have went to uni. Or maybe I should have went to uni. Your current power is being pulled into the past. If we, let these, if we allow these regrets, these thoughts that of things that happened that you wish that went a different way or that you wish that you did something different to hold you now, your, do you see how your energy is just there? You haven't got the energy right now to play with this reality in this present moment. And I'm not going to esoteric here saying stay in the present moment, namaste. Okay, yeah, that's cool. But all I'm saying is a simple thing of if something's happened, it's happened. You can't go back and change it. You worrying, you stressing, you overthinking, you, you overanalyzing this thing is not going to change it. The only benefit that you get from these past things that happen is for you to learn. If you're stuck in it and you're thinking, why didn't I do this? How come this happened? This, that, the other. You're stuck in it. That energy's there. If you've got 100% of your energy that you can use in this day and 50% is back there, you've only got 50%. And you're wondering why you're waking up tired. You're wondering why you're feeling fatigued. You're wondering why stress is getting to you. You're wondering why you've got back pains, neck pains. You're wondering why certain people are treating you a certain way because you're not showing up at the 100% capacity that you could be showing up. I know, and there's some geckos here in Bali, and uh, in this choir as well, echoing what I'm saying, agreeing with what I'm saying, because this is a big thing. If your energy, 50% of your energy, 70%, some people, majority of their energy, stuck in the past, overthinking these things, but not learning from them, you're going to keep making the same, same mistakes. And you're going to keep, even if you don't make the same mistakes, you're going to keep feeling like you've made the same mistakes. Why? Because you're replaying those situations over and over and over again. If you get a cut on your arm, are you going to sit there looking like, oh, why did this happen? Start opening the cut again. Oh, why did, I, why did I walk that thing? Why didn't I look where I was going? Start opening the cut again. Some of you guys are not just opening the cut again. Some of you guys are pouring salt in. We need to look at that thing. Okay, it's happened. Why did it happen? Oh, I wasn't looking where I was going. Or I was looking, but I didn't realize that that thing was hot or that thing was hurting me. Okay, so next time something like that happens, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to, I'm not going to act that same way. I'm going to do something different. If I see something that's going to burn me, I'm going to walk around it. Or I'm going to speak to that person, but not act like that. Or I'm going to make sure if somebody says something like that to me, I'm not going to let them say that to me again. Okay, I've learned. I've seen why that happened. Now, I carry on with my day, allowing my natural healing blueprint to take care of that. You see, your body knows how to heal. Allowing the healing blueprint to take care of that. Not opening up that wound again. So this is the second thing. Bring, looking and analyzing. Okay, first of all was the belief. Second of all is the thoughts. Think right now. 
what are some of the thoughts that you keep playing over in your head? Was it to do with relationship? Was it to do with finances? Was it to do with a missed opportunity? Was it to do with something with yourself? Just maybe even type in the comments. Let me know. Not just for me, but for you. Because sometimes we can say, oh yeah, I know this, I know this, I think this, yeah, it was this. But if we don't actually verbalize this, whether it's out loud or comments or journaling or somewhere tangible in this physical reality, it just kind of stays in the head. You know that feeling where you've got a lot to do, but then as soon as you write it all down, like a, a to-do list, you maybe haven't even done any of the things yet, but you just feel better because you wrote it down. It's that same thing. So let me know in the comments, like, if there is any thoughts or what thoughts come to mind that you know that you've been playing on your mind that you should be not focusing so much on, just seeing it for what it is, learning from it. You know, they say, forgive, but don't forget. So you can forgive that situation, but it doesn't mean that you forget it, you learn from it, you grow from it. Now you don't make that same mistake in the future. Now, the third thing that I wanted to share in this video, and this is, like I said, the most tangible thing that you can do, is all to do with this thing called sunk cost fallacy. Now, if you haven't heard what this is, you can look it up. It's called the sunk cost fallacy. And what this means is it's a phenomenon that most of us experience. And what it involves, you, you tend to see this in finances and relationship and other areas of life too, but these are the two big ones. What happens is so, the sunk cost fallacy is where you have invested heavily into something in the past. And because you've invested so heavily into that thing, you are reluctant to change your course of action, so to change what you're doing about it. For example, in relationship, maybe you've invested heavily into the relationship for some months, some years, but you know that this relationship isn't for you, doesn't feel like the thing that you, you want in the heart, that you know that this is not the relationship for you, but you stick with it. Maybe you start feeling like you're in a prison, right? in your own prison, because you invested so much into it, but you know that in mind it knows, or in heart it knows, that there should be a different action taken, but you don't take that different action. Why? Because of the sunk cost fallacy. How much you invested in the past is directly linking to you in the present. And this happened to me with some assets that I was holding. Well, I knew that actually when I invested in these were some NFTs, different assets. When I invested in them, that, that was cool back then. But now because the price and everything was dropping down, I knew that actually this, this investment is not the most optimal investment to be in. But I was so clinging onto it. And what it felt like, and I actually got this, this, this message in one of my deeper meditation, was that I was like in like shackles. What do I mean by shackles? Like chains to this past thing that I did, not allowing me to take this energy into this moment to use it. I was stuck with that investment just there. Until I was given this insight through a deep meditation that I was doing to sell this and use this. Even though, yes, okay, to the mind, but I, I made, a, uh, let's say, 1,000, 2,000 loss or something like that. Or maybe some of them I didn't make a loss, but I made a profit, but I felt like I could be making more profit in the future if I hold on to this. But I was shown that if I do that, I'm just stuck to that scenario and waiting for something to happen. If I take charge, release those things that I know that need to be released, bring that energy, bring that power into this moment, the finances in this scenario that I could be generating is substantially more. And obviously in the moment, my mind was kicking back like, but no, but what if this happens? Or what if this NFT skyrockets? What if this happens? Now, in hindsight, I can see on one level, that thing didn't skyrocket. On another level, by me actually taking that, that investment out, selling those investments and using that finances, I was able to make 10 times more money just by not being carried in those shackles. If I didn't do that, not only would I have not made 10 times more money, I would have actually lost, let me think, at least five times more money of what I took out when I thought that I was at a loss. Okay, I know this is a specific example for me, but there's many scenarios like this. Sometimes people think, oh, in relationship, maybe I'll just stick with it. Maybe give it a few more months. Maybe give him or give her another year. See how this goes. When actually that year that they could have been, okay, this isn't working. Let me just be honest with myself, be real with myself, listen to that feeling that I know that I need to do and then carry on and then do something else for myself or maybe even meet someone else. And it's the best relationship ever. But people don't allow that. Why? Because the familiarity feels safe. The familiarity is your comfort zone. And I know that I'm getting passionate about this because this is what I've seen in my life. You have huge and repercussions, huge impacts. So that's why I said this third thing about the actions that we take is for you to think now, what are the things that you know that you're holding on to, the sunk cost fallacy, where you know actually right now that you should be taking different actions, but you're not because of that sunk cost fallacy, because of that invested time or invested money or invested energy previously. So you're feeling like you're tied to it to carry on forever. Whatever those things are now is for you to question, am I ready to make that step? Am I ready to, to take that leap of faith? Not on someone else or something else or hoping that something will take me, but take that leap of faith on myself. And if you're ready, then this is your time. You're watching this video for a reason. You wouldn't be here watching to the end if there wasn't a reason for you to see this. So start to think, any beliefs 
that you've held on to in the past that maybe not even your beliefs, maybe they were believe your, your beliefs that came through for something that you was doing, but now things need to change. Any thoughts, any thoughts of situations, of memories, of circumstances that you'll keep opening that wound, stop opening the wound, let it heal, let it set. Carry on, bring that energy, bring that 50%, 70%, 80% of energy back into this moment. And any actions that you've taken in the past that maybe you've invested heavily into, what are some of the ones that you can be like, hey, I know I invested heavily into this, if I stop this, it might feel like a loss in the short term, but I know by taking my energy back, taking my power back, giving myself more, more ability to take different actions, I can bring so much more energy, so much more finances, so much more love, so much more happiness into this moment and beyond. So I leave that with you. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I know that some of you guys are gonna watch this, feel like, yeah, I should do that, but not do it. Just carry on watching YouTube, carry on watching another video, and this is the reality for majority of people out there. But I'm speaking to you that if you want to make this change, if you want to make a difference in your life, then now is the time to act. Not tomorrow, not next week, now. When you're in this inspiration, in this heart-led, aligned action moment, take this action. What's something that you're committing to right now to make this change? To not let your energy be stuck in the past and only working at 10%, 20%, 30%, 50% of your capacity when there's 100% for you there. So other than that, my name is Joshua Andre. If it's your first time watching this video, make sure I'm watching my channel. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content like this. If there's any questions you have, leave it in the comments. And also leave a like button, you know, the typical YouTube stuff. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Sending you much love. And if you're ready, take that leap of faith in yourself.